Welcome to the first of a series, Demystifying Pointers in C. This is going to be an insight on what pointers are and how they work. We'll start by considering a 16-byte memory, and data is going to be stored in these bytes. Now, we need a way of saying, get me the data stored here or store this data here. That's going to be achieved by identifying each of these bytes by a special number called an address. This type of memory, where each of the bytes is going to be given a unique address, is called a byte addressable memory. And these addresses are usually represented by hexadecimal digits. We have 16 bytes here. Uh, we'll be able to identify all of the bytes uniquely on this memory with just one hex digit, 0 through F. This byte here would be at address 6, and the one here at F. Uh, consider a bigger memory of 256 bytes uh, where we'll need to start from 00 and go all the way up to FF which will comprise of 256 different numbers to identify 256 different bytes. So we'll require two hex digits for this memory. Bigger the size of the memory, bigger will the address number be. Let's consider this C statement which says that we need a variable called num of type int. And here num is called the identifier and int the data type. And these data types specify how many bytes the data needs and how the data is going to be stored in those bytes. So how is this going to play out on our memory of 256 bytes? We know that an int is 4 bytes long so it's going to reserve 4 bytes of memory for the variable num and associate the name num with the address of the starting byte. Meaning num is going to identify that by. Hence, the variable names are called identifiers. They're like an alias for a memory address. Now, if I want to store a number in this variable, say 78, I do num equals 78. It would go to that address and store 78 in those four bytes, previously reserved for num. In C, I can get the address of the starting byte from a variable name using the ampersand. And in our case, doing ampersand num would give us the value 0x98. This is called a reference, and ampersand is called the reference operator. There are special variables to store these reference values, and those are called pointers. In order to declare a pointer that is going to hold a reference to an int, we'll have to say int star and then the variable name. Uh, the star here indicates that it's a pointer, so p is a pointer to an int. The size of a pointer depends on the operating system, not on the type, as all types have the same kind of address, and this kind is determined by the kind of the operating system. I'm on a 64-bit machine, which is capable of dealing with address numbers as long as 64 bits, and 8 bits make a byte, so to store a number that's 64 bits long, I'd need 8 bytes. Now that I've declared a pointer, it's time to assign it a reference to an int. Just like we assigned 78 to num, we would like to assign the reference to num to p. So I'd say p equals ampersand num. And that would make the reference be stored in those 8 bytes allocated to p. These addresses are going to be arbitrary and the same variable will be assigned a different address every time you run the program. But that would not break the part where we make p point to num. Whatever address num gets is going to be stored in p, so I'll just have an arrow to indicate that p points to num. Now there's a way we can access the variable num using the pointer p by using the star operator. I can do a star p equals 1. Uh, this will assign the number 1 to num. This is called dereferencing, where you access the variable pointed to by a pointer. And star is called the dereference operator. Star here is dereferencing a pointer, but star during declaration wouldn't. It would just mean that we are declaring a pointer. What about this statement? This is going to increment the value stored at num by 1. Uh, whenever you dereference a pointer, you are accessing the variable at the address stored in the pointer. So we can replace all star p's with nums. and the statement would still have the same effect. Why would we need this functionality? Will be discussed in a later video. Thanks for watching.